I think the biggest thing with cracking the code to the process is actually loving it. So loving that process, falling in love with that grind, that's when you see true transformations. If you don't love what you're doing every day and you're pulling yourself to do something you don't want to do, it's going to not pay off because eventually you're just going to stop doing it. When you're in love with this process, whatever results come, it, it doesn't really matter what those end results are. You just know that you put everything out there that you possibly could have. You're listening to Off the Court, a show dedicated to making you the best version of yourself as an athlete and as a person. I'm Coach Jack, CEO and owner of Close the Gate Hoops. If you want to take your life and game to the next level, this is the podcast for you. Let's get it. What up, gatekeepers? Thank you for joining us again today for episode six, The Process. Today, I got my co-host, Sam. What up? We also have another special guest that I'm not going to name just yet, but he actually was a previous CTG coach, and he's one of my greatest friends and someone that I actually look up to a real whole lot. So recap of our last episode for episode five. The more and more we record of this, the better and better we're starting to get. I thought episode five, Mind Over Body, was the best and most fluid podcast that we've had yet to date with Sam and Coach Aaron. Our downloads continue to decrease just a little bit, so I strongly suggest hit the subscribe button and turn the notifications on so you're always alerted when we come out with new podcasts. And again, we still always want critique. You're never going to be perfect at anything. Always strive for better and more. I also want to remind you guys again, just if you're new to this podcast and listening, check out our CTG Shooting Academy. If you're trying to transform your shot and game, it's the perfect blend of the knowledge, the drills, and the mindset necessary to become an elite shooter. I also encourage you to click every link in our social media bio for a free secret video on transforming from an average to elite basketball player. That's what transformed me from average to elite, and that's what I use with all of my students. If there was a secret sauce, that would for sure be it. So, this special guest is a D2 basketball player for Hillsdale College. He's an extremely smart student and one of my best friends. Jacob Nagobi, thank you for joining us. My man, I appreciate you for having me on. So, Jacob, why don't you let the listeners get to know you a little more, talk about your college experience, what you're studying, and what you're currently doing right now. Yeah, perfect. So, right now I'm at Hillsdale, a small D2 school in, su- in southern Michigan, right at the handle. So, right now um, I'm studying biology and exercise science, um, playing basketball as well. Yeah, um, I mean, we both play with Jacob in high school. Our junior year and he's a great older than us and someone you really like to be around and really enthusiastic and he had a really good work ethic and is definitely a role model I think to a lot of the people in our grade for a player and individual that we would like to be like and Jacob I have some questions regarding college basketball because I think some of the listeners today might be wanting to join college hoops How do you deal with both succeeding in school and in basketball and how do you deal with the time that it both takes yeah first off i want to say thanks guys those words mean a lot during the first two years of school kind of trying to find that balance um it was pretty tough that was one of the toughest things figuring out how to balance school staying focused on on one thing while still getting the amount of work in and doing what you have to do on the basketball side of things that was tough, but I think you just learn, you keep going, you stay committed to what you're doing, and, and having goals and staying focused is one of the most important things that you can do. You know, it's lots of distractions once you get to college, but if you can really find a way, find a really good community of people, um, pick the right school, that's another thing, and, and your family, your friends, they all keep you, keep you grounded. How'd you know you picked the right school? What, what was the moment where you're like, all right, this was the right decision? Yeah, yeah. So that's a great question. When I first got there, I mean, it's a, it's a really small school, so I didn't really know how it was going to fit. Started playing basketball and, and getting around the team. That was kind of the biggest thing for me. Once I, got, I met that group of guys, it's, it's the closest family that I've ever been a part of and, and 
really just feeling feeling people that are like you. Lots of guys that are from Wisconsin, so we clicked right away. So, yeah. That's that's really good. So in terms of what the process is, you guys, this is something my dad would always preach to me when I was a freshman and sophomore in high school who struggled to be the man on the team and get the most minutes on the basketball team. And in terms of what trusting the process really means, the process is the grind and the journey to whatever your goal and destination is. And something that is really important and what happens to most people when they work really hard towards something is they normally end up quitting because they don't see results soon enough. If you have the ability to trust the process and know what you're doing is going to pay off, it's going to pay you much more dividends than doing this start and stop thing when you don't see results right away. Yeah, and I just want to dive in right away talking about the process. Jack and Jacob are both players that made it to the college level. And that's obviously a big process and a long journey to make it that far and be that talented. And I just want to ask, what is, what is some advice that you could give to people that are maybe struggling in the process right now to be able to make it to the college hoops level? There's this thing called the plane theory. When you're working really hard towards something, you're not gonna see results for say a limited amount of time. So just for this example, we'll say a few weeks. And it's gonna feel like you're not improving at all. And then one day, you're gonna wake up, say you play some 2v2, 3v3 with the guys, and you're just blowing by people. And you're like, wow, I feel way better than I was yesterday. And then you plane again. It's almost like you don't feel like you're improving. And then next few weeks, pew, you take this huge stair step of growth. You're not gonna wake up every single day feeling better than you did the day before. That's the plain theory really embodies what trusting the process means and just knowing what you're doing is gonna pay off and just wait for the results to come. You're not chasing the results, you're just letting the results come to you. I think you guys hit that spot on in terms of what the process is. The word itself kind of describes it. It's it's long, it's not quick, it's not easy, it's not always smooth. But it's a blessing right now. Everyone knows that not everyone's able to play. There's lots of teams, conferences that have got canceled. High school people getting their, their senior seasons taken away. Um, I think the biggest part of the process is being grateful for every single opportunity, every single day. One of the biggest things that I that I am told is is when you're going out there, um, think of it as your last time. And, and you really take a lot of advantage and you, you, you use that time a lot more efficiently and, and you feel that a lot better. So I think if anyone's going through the process right now and it's slow, um, you're not seeing the results that you want right away, you're not getting whatever the minutes, you're not hitting the shots that you see, um, it's kind of just being grateful for having the opportunity to be on the court, whether it's one-on-one, -on -one, five on five, in season, out of season, um, just being thankful every single day that you got the opportunity to play. I think the biggest thing with cracking the code to the process is actually loving it. So loving that process, falling in love with that grind, that's when you see true transformations. If you don't love what you're doing every day and you're pulling yourself to do something you don't want to do, it's going to not pay off because eventually you're just going to stop doing it. When you're in love with this process, whatever results come, it, it doesn't really matter what those end results are. You just know that you put everything out there that you possibly could have. If it was your last game to go be, you would have been satisfied because you gave everything you could have into that process. You had no regrets. See, kids that don't fall in love with that process, say they do have a career-ending injury, they're like, wow, I could have worked a lot harder to have a much better potential. But see, they can never go back and do that because they never fell in love with the process. Yeah, those are both great points that you guys had. I wanted to ask Jacob a question. Um, obviously, it's been a really strange year, and this summer, I'm sure you didn't know what the future held, and especially regarding your season. How did you stay committed to your process during this summer, not knowing if you would even have a season, and what are some things that you would do or tell yourself to stay on that grind? I can speak, I can say probably not only me, for everyone, this is a difficult summer. It was weird. I was traveling a lot. I was moving around in new new environments. And it was easy for me with everything that was happening to just kind of want to say, 
Well, let's relax for a second. You come off a, a good year and in a good season, and, and you kind of want to hit the relax button. I think the biggest thing that a lot of athletes right now kind of forget to do is take time, reevaluate why you're doing what you're doing, put out some goals for the summer, where you want to be, um, and that summer is the biggest time to get there. So whatever your off season is, it's kind of depends on your summer, how your summer is. If you can come out into the season, into the preseason, into the season ready to go and a step ahead, that's really huge. So, so when I was out here this summer, I went back to school um, for the last two months and every single day we were just kind of training, staying focused. I, I got to work side by side with my coaches um, and they kind of built out kind of what I was going to be doing every single day and trying to improve a, a certain skills that I was going to be needing this season. So I think that they supported me a lot in that. I, I couldn't have done it alone. And obviously everyone will find out you try to do it alone. It's a little too tough. So yeah, have someone around you, have that support group, keep you, keep you directed, but, but also have a good goal. So I have a challenge for you guys right now, listeners. What is your biggest goal? Okay, and if you can answer that immediately, you have a giant problem. You should be reinforcing whatever your biggest goals are over and over again each day. If you have to think about your goals, you don't want that goal enough. And that goes right back to what you were talking to. You always have to reflect and rethink what your goals are. Because once you get to a certain point, you're, you think you're at the top of the mountain, you got to keep climbing. The mountain doesn't end. That's, that's the beauty of the process. You're always improving, always striving for greater. And one thing I wanted to give kudos to Nagobi, he didn't say any of this, and I forgot to say this in the intro, but Nagobi, you were, you went back two months early because you earned a scholarship, right? You were walk-on for your Division II school, uh, Division II school team, and he earned a scholarship. Now, knowing you, Nagobi, I don't know if this was a specific goal for you to earn, but it's it was almost like one of the byproducts of Nagobi's ability to trust the process. All he was doing was just grinding and grinding and grinding over and over again. There was this byproduct of a scholarship, and that's what happens when you fall in love with this process. So did you want to talk about that? what that felt like to earn that scholarship after working your ass off? Yeah, no, absolutely. It was a great feeling, and I think there's two responses that everyone has to win. It's either what's next or... Give me a second. Let me celebrate this. And I've I had both of those responses this summer. And it's it's to wins and to losses. You know, I think a big maturity point of mine was, all right, what's next? But also I wanted to say, let me enjoy this one. So took a step back. Um, I was really grateful for it. It was one of the biggest things that that's happened to me this summer. So I was I was really grateful for it. But then I had to, I had to be able to lock in focus in on what was next because it's it's easy it's easy to just say all right well I did that that was my goal that was I can, your goal? I can relax that that was definitely that was definitely okay. a goal yeah that was a goal of mine it was a huge goal of mine for my family and for everything so yeah after that after that you just kind of had to say all right what's next am I happy where I'm at and, and I'm ready to relax which if you are right there some people can but but then what's next so yeah, that's really good that goes back to our last episode the relentless quote the second your mind says done your instincts say next you always keep going it never stops yeah that's some great stuff i mean always striving to attain something that might feel unattainable is really the path on greatness and getting better and becoming the best form of yourself it's a proven fact that if you rewrite your goals down, you're way more likely to achieve them. And that's why I asked you guys if you know what your biggest goals are. Because if you don't, what are you striving for? What are you trying to get better at each day? Because something out of your day should be going towards that goal. Otherwise, you don't care about that goal enough. The message to all my young ones, um, all the younger kids that are kind of, kind of looking towards either in high school or about to be in high school, I think this year has also taught us to enjoy enjoy what you're doing. Um, a lot of people get so caught up in the day to day with where they have to be and what that big goal is that they lose kind of sight of it um, and they stop having fun in, in what 
playing the game is and and what you talked about loving it so unless you're loving it every single day don't forget that it's a blessing i mean we all kind of wish that we were back playing high school again or playing in seventh grade when we all get to play together and there's a lot of great things about it so keep enjoying it and and you'll reap the rewards of your hard work so our last podcast uh was with coach aaron and coach jack and and me and it was a mind over body talking about mental toughness and how mental toughness and being mentally strong can really help you attain your goals and become better. And something Jacob really wanted to touch on was adding to the mind over body and talking about mind, body, and spirit and how those three pillars kind of incorporate all together on being able to attain something that you want to. So Jacob, could you introduce us to that topic and maybe why you wanted to talk about it? Yeah, for sure. I'm kind of more of a science guy, so I, I wanted to relate that, what you guys talked about, mind over body. Um, and I appreciate what you guys are doing at Close the Gate. Coaching-wise, it's it's something that I've always dreamed of doing as well. Well, I'll let them know right now, Coach Nagobi has first dibs on being the CTG physical therapist because what's your major right now? Uh, exercise science, exercise bio, science. biology and exercise science. Yeah. So we'll he, he actually has already trained for us in the past for our 3v3 leagues. So some of you kids might remember him, but most likely you'll be seeing Nagobi more in the future. That's what we hope for. That's what we <laughs> hope for. That's what I hope for. Yeah. So when I'm talking to a lot of athletes and I'm approaching them, I did a little bit of training this summer and the year before here with Close the Gate Hoops. I kind of like taking a holistic approach on the athletes and discussing the mind, body, and spirit. And I wanted to ask what you guys thought when I say those three things, what it means to you before we kind of have a little discussion on it. So the first thing that comes to mind when I see mind, body, and spirit, mind's the first word, and I think mind is probably the most important thing as an athlete in any sport because your mind's the base and the foundation of everything you do afterwards. So if your mind isn't in the right place, no matter what it is, everything you do after that is going to be off. So if you've ever built a house before, the foundation has to be perfect or everything else after that is wrong. And that's what the mind is to me. You have to be in that positive and ready mindset to be able to do anything else after the mind. Yeah, those are some good points. I think maybe our definitions might be a little different. I think mind to me is the precision and accuracy that you're striving towards to become better at what you're doing. It's sharpening your mind to become better at your craft. It's the footwork that you're practicing instead of uh, more of the power and lifting, uh, the, the watching film or doing practice problems. Um, it's just the little things that you're doing to become that much better and more sharp and more efficient uh, towards your craft. Yeah, so when I think about mine in terms of maximizing your performance on and off the floor, I'm thinking about life, but specifically right now on the court, I really think about it's the knowledge of the game. Um, it's knowing exactly what you're going to do, coming each and every play. It's reading your scouting report and knowing it, seeing what the other team's going to do, executing every single play, it's the ins and outs. It's kind of the knowledge and the understanding of the game. Um, so that's that's what I'm. When I say mind, that's really where I'm coming from. That's that's really good. Mental is to physical as four is to one. Yeah. So Jacob, what do you do to become more mindful and attain more knowledge on the game to help you? So this is a big one, and this is one that lots of athletes either struggle with or don't understand it enough especially what the college level has taught me is that it's one of the most important things to your game studying the game watching film it gives you an understanding of what other players are going to do what you can do knowing your plays and all that i think the mind part of it and and being the smartest player on the court at all times is a huge advantage i've started to use it a lot more I know when I'm playing Jack, I know exactly what he's going to do. <laughs> no, you do I try not. To I try to say that. But as best as I can, I've been playing f with him for a while. So as best as I can, I think the mind part, and, and he's really good with this as well. What your perception is on the mind is 
basically the studying and knowledge you can attain, you can totally control that, which is a huge advantage because anyone can do it. And that's not just basketball. It's whatever you're doing. If you try and attain the most knowledge possible about whatever you're doing, you're going to have a huge advantage over everyone else. Yeah, I, ha- I think having a good uh, towards your craft, and in this case basketball, will really take you to another level and make you elite. That's something that a lot of NBA players I know talk about players like LeBron, that he knows everything that's going to happen and everything that has happened. And that's a real difference maker when we're talking splitting hairs between talent and when you're already at the best of the best. So, And especially what Jack said on how you can control this and you can become better at this. You just have to put in the time and you need to study and really care and it can really take you to a whole new level. So one thing that I do with all of my students, and this is probably the most important thing in terms of increasing that mind aspect of the mind, body, spirit is meditation. And this is something I do with all of my students and all the high level basketball players that we've been talking about, LeBron and Kopi, they have advocated for meditation over and over and over again. There was actually an instance in the 2012 NBA Finals where LeBron literally meditated on the bench before he hit a huge shot. And the act of meditation is basically when we just focus on our breath. And the reason I think this is so crucial, it's basically like a bench press for the brain. What you're doing when you're just focusing on your breath is enhancing that focus part of your game. And whenever you get in the zone, and me and Nagobi both know what this feels like, you can chuck up basically any shot, and it's going to go in. And this zone, we're not thinking for this zone. And I talked about this in the last episode. The less we think, the more accurate we become. If our focus is increased through meditation, we can stay in that zone longer. Another benefit of having that focus increase from meditation is getting out of funks sooner because when we're in funks and can't shoot we're thinking too much so the more we think the accuracy then decreases if you can realize you're thinking quicker you're going to get out of those shooting slumps quicker so i think meditation as a basketball player is one of the best things you can do for yourself but not only as a basketball player it's been proven that meditation improves your mood and As you're playing, if you're in a better mood, you're going to perform better. If you perform better in those training sessions, then you perform better in the game. Your mood has a big impact in how you perform in every little thing you do throughout your life. 100%. I think you hit it spot on and you beat me to it. Um, You you talked about you talked about how the spirit that's your your kind of approach on that was kind of my idea of the spirit um, and the self and, and the voice that's inside your head. Going back on what you guys had said, the mind 100% is in your control. Um, that's you. That's something that you you have every single control of. And I think that's a great segue right into the spirit. My When I'm thinking of spirit, I'm thinking, I'm thinking of that voice in your head. That's kind of like the consciousness thing. Uh, you're a huge advocate for it, and me as well. Um, for the past few years, I've been been a big advocate of, of, of guided meditation. And just kind of calming, calming that voice down and, and just being a little more present. And that plays a huge part, huge part in your game because it alters your mind and, and gets you in the right direction before you're going to go out to play, before you're going to go out to work out, before you're going to go take a test, before you're going to go to school. Um, well, life's extremely imperfect. Everything's going to be thrown at you for it to go wrong. And if you have this calmness about you, It's called the equanimity muscle, and that's the ability of just being okay with being okay. And you have a huge advantage if you have that skill. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Yeah, when you say spirit, uh, what I think is kind of the attitude that you have and you bring forth to your day-to-day things. And something that reminded me of my past was what Coach Suter would always say. And if you don't know who Coach Suter is, he's a Janesville legend, uh, legendary basketball, baseball, football coach, and just person overall. And we would always have this post-game chant after a really big win, and it was, I will win. Why? I'll tell you why. Because I've got faith, courage, and enthusiasm. And those three things are something that everyone can have and that you should bring to the table uh, every time that 
you're going to be playing or uh, going to be going somewhere or trying to do something. And I also think that spirit can, goes with mental toughness and what we talked about last time. And it's really crucial uh, for this whole podcast and the process and embracing the grind. What do you guys think um, spirit can help you bring uh, towards embracing the grind and the process? So spirit for me, when I see spirit, I think passion. If you have a true passion for what you're grinding for in the process. So when I was in high school, my process was grinding towards becoming the best basketball player that I could be. And I had a true passion for waking up every day at 5 a.m., getting those shots up, getting shots up before practice, then having practice, then getting to bed early to just do it all over again. I truly loved and had passion, spirit, for doing that every single day. So when I see the word spirit, that's what I think of as passion and true desire. And I actually touched on this in episode one. You retain and learn more information when you're passionate about what you're looking and reading. When we're passionate about what we're trying to learn and we pull ourselves to do it, we retain way more information. So whenever you're trying to learn something, if you're not passionate about it, you're not going to learn as much as you possibly could have. We're talking mind, body, spirit. Some people would think one or the other is more important than the other. I want to I want to say for me and for a lot of people that I know and a lot of people that I've heard, all three of them play a huge role in maximizing your performance as an athlete, um, especially at the higher level. NBA guys talk a lot about it, how, how are you going to handle setbacks? How are you going to handle whatever goes wrong on that court. Um, and, that, and that's a big mindfulness and, and being present and being able to be grounded enough to say, I still have my, my goals and I know where I want to go and I know what we have to do to take care of business um, and, and, and get a win on the court and off the court as well. So I think it plays a huge role for athletes. Um, if you want to maximize your performance, start thinking a little bit more about Where's your mind at? Where's your spirit at? Right, right before you're about to go play, are you are you are you locked in um, to what you got to do? Yeah, they definitely all have to work together to maximize performance. Yeah, and I think when we're talking about the process in general, sometimes it sucks, but embracing the grind will not only make you better, but it'll help you achieve your goals too. And having a good spirit and a positive mindset will push you further and will help you enjoy the moment at the time too. Oh, while you're going through it. And I think uh, everyone knows there's been times that suck all the early mornings and late nights and long days. But looking back at it, those times are very memorable. And that's how you truly get better. And I think a really good way to get through those times is to have that good spirit and positive mindset. And everyone's had those times where you're really not feeling it. Your, your mood's just not good and you're feeling down. But Nothing good ever comes from worrying or sitting around feeling sorry for yourself. You really just got to keep positive and keep pushing on and things will turn good. And looking back at it, I'm glad that I decided to push through it and embracing the grind and process because that really made me who I am and it just improves your entire life and spirit in general. And don't be too sorry for yourself if you feel like you're getting down too much. It's totally normal for people not to be in good moods. It's if you can recognize you're in a bad mood and you just don't do anything about it. That's the problem. It's totally okay to be down on yourself. Just don't feel sorry that you're down about it. Just find ways to fix it and improve on that mood. Yeah, there, there's a huge difference between good and, and great players because everyone's going to go through those bad days, not want to be at practice, not want to get that workout in. But if you're able to lock in and, and just be focus enough to get through that that suck um embrace the suck yeah and that goes right into loving the pain one of my dad's great buddies and a guy that looked up to my dad when he was playing high school basketball was david jackson and he's the weight lifting trainer for virginia tech and their slogan gosh i have a coin of it i don't know if it's this exact thing but it's about loving the pain and especially when you're weightlifting and say you're on that like sixth rep of the back squat and it feels like everything in your body is about to give out. Think love the pain when you're going through something like that 
to push through for that next rep. And we talked about this in the last episode, the wall. The growth is after that wall. When you want to be done and you push through that, that's where all the growth is. So think loving the pain, that's where the gold is. Go get your gold after the wall. Truly try and love that pain. Yeah, and when we're talking about body, it's really what you put in is what you get out and not many limitations on what you can do to become your best performing self. I mean, we've all seen those people that were like, dang, I wish I could look like them. And like, like Nagobi. Yeah, like <laughs> like Jacob Nagobi. He is in very good shape. And well, that, I just want to, how tall are you, Nagobi? Five, nine? 11. He is not 5'11. Five 5'11, eleven. Five eleven on, he, it's on record now. Nope. He's got to be 5'9. Six foot with shoes. No, okay. He's, he's not six foot with shoes. <laughs> um, but I'm trying to give you a compliment here, Nagobi. You earned a D2 scholarship and he's 5'9. Nagobi is insanely jacked. So why don't you give our listeners a little insight to how you got your body to look the way it does, Nagobi? Now, this is the one that gets me pretty pumped up. And I still think it's, it's just as important as every single one, but it's, it's very important. Uh, when you guys talk about body, the physical aspect of, of sports, the physical aspect of life, this is when we're talking about your strength and conditioning, your quickness, um, your abilities, your skill part. It's also your sleep, your daily habits, health and, and all of the things that affect how your performance. It's been a really big focus of mine, um, not by my help of, at, at any rate. I got to shout out Brad here. He's really put me on a lot of game. So I, I just had a great community of people. Um, and, and even at school right now, we have a really good strength and, and conditioning program. Um, some of the best trainers in, in the game and, and they continue to help us grow. Um, but it's a big focus on it, um, and it plays a huge part in your game. I, when I think of the word body, I think of combining hard work and smart work together. So I can speak from experience. I'm probably someone that definitely overworked my body at times. Probably last summer, the summer I was going into my freshman year of college, I, I was probably working out four times a day. Um, and that was probably like three shooting workouts and one lifting workout. But now I'm doing about one workout a day. Well, I'll play pickup whenever I want, but I'll, I have the vertical program that I'm doing right now, but I am still on this steady growth in terms of skill in my game that I was when I was doing four workouts a day. So I'm starting to use a lot more of smart work with my hard work in terms of taking better care of my body. So it's always refueled and 100% for that next workout. You got to think of your body as a phone. Like if you're going on a, say you're going to the fair or something and you're not going to have an outlet near you, you're not going to want that phone at 40%, right? Because you don't want your phone to die when you just get there and you're going to be there the entire day. You got to think that when you're doing your workouts, you want your phone and your body to be at 100%. So you get the maximum amount of potential from that workout. If you go in at 80%, it's not even going to be close to the same gains if you are completely and fully rested. So there is a balance between underworking and overworking. And once you find that sweet spot, you're going to maximize your potential. And I think this goes back to the plane theory that Jack was talking about. You won't notice it right away that your body's improving but if you, stay, if you stick to it and you're staying on your schedule, in a few weeks, you'll notice, wow, I was struggling with that weight earlier or, wow, I couldn't run this fast or jump this high. And once you put the work in, later you'll notice that it's really doing something. So if you're ever thinking this is useless, you just got to keep going through it and you'll eventually, you'll peak and you'll see that growth that's coming. One of the best life skills that you guys can have is patience. Be patient about your process. Be patient about your work. Your results are going to come to you. Just trust your process. Yeah. And one of the reasons I want to talk about this today is everything that we've said is 100% in your control. When you're talking about maximizing your performance, um, your body, I think, I think that part is people don't think that it's in their control, but there's so many things that you can do. Um, to become a better athlete on the court. You can change your fast and slow twitch muscles. P 
people don't think you can do that, but you can. Obviously, some people have to work harder for it than others. Like Zion, he didn't have to do much work to get the body he had. But by slow and fast twitch muscles, slow twitch, you're a really good runner if you have a lot of slow twitch. If you have a lot of fast twitch muscles, you're extremely explosive and can jump really high. You can transfer those muscle fibers over by doing certain exercises. So it is possible to get the body and explosion you want. You just might have to work harder for it than others. And you're a vert coder, right? Yeah. 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 So that's that's another system where you've seen improvements throughout that's, throughout your doing it, right? That's a yeah, that's a perfect example of hard work and smart work. Yeah. Have you do you know exactly like have you seen an increase in your vertical by any Well, I got my first measure? dunk off the dribble. Yeah. A few weeks ago yeah. i could never even get close to that before i started yeah i i went through that program last this summer actually and and just seeing that seeing the ability that there's people that have put so much time into finding ways for you athletes to become quicker um better performers being able to jump higher um, it's it's awesome when you're able to get up and do things that you thought you no way that you could be able to do and and so no better feeling than that. yeah yeah so it's it, it's it's possible and it happens and and just like Jack can attest to it, it's 100 percent in your control. Well, nothing's impossible until someone does it, right? Yeah. That's everything that's ever happened on this world. It was impossible until someone first did it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you're not going to be able to accomplish anything if you're just sitting on your couch and not willing to do anything. And I also think improving your body is one of the most fun parts about your off season and in season training. I mean, getting a good group of guys together and or girls and just working together and lifting weights or running or playing basketball together is super fun and accomplishing it with someone else is super motivating and it can actually help you become better. But I think one of the things that uh, young athletes might not necessarily uh, put a lot of focus on is diet. And I think diet is one of the most least fun aspects of the body part. And what are some things you guys have noticed or think athletes should do regarding diet? So in terms of diet, I know you're going to have a lot to say about this, Nagobi, so I'll give my insight quick. But if you want to see like physical changes, like how people can see what your body looks like, that's obviously weightlifting goes into that, but that's all diet. If you're trying to get abs and all you're doing is crunches and planks but not fixing your diet, you're never going to see your abs. Your abs are getting stronger, but there's still that layer of fat over it. So in terms of physical appearance, diet is by far the most important aspect of that. Diet also controls what your energy levels are. And you're, again, uh, about what I was talking with, recharge your body like a phone, always be 100%. Your diet gives you that 100% potential. If you're eating... Cheetos for breakfast and cupcakes. I don't know. I need to think of different food, but something that is pop tarts. Pop tarts. Yeah. Say you're having pop tarts for breakfast. Again, I talked about this in episode three. That's an extremely <laughs> processed food. Preserved a food is the more macronutrients that are going to be sucked out of it. So if you're trying to improve your diet, stay away from processed food. So that's literally anything fast food and start eating more fresh and raw foods that if we're left out for a while, they would mold and become ungood because they weren't preserved as much. For my in-season, I'm, I'm in-season right now, so I think diet, it's a little bit different. The two biggest things I think for sure are diet and sleep. Um, and you've, ta you've touched on the sleep things, and I think that's really huge. We're all trying to get better at it. Uh, we're going to get there one day. Um, how, but, how much sleep do you get a night? Man, variable. <laughs> um, in school, it's tough sometimes, but we're getting we're we're gonna maximize or just have to get seven. Um, Consistency. Yeah, that's what matters. Yeah, every single time. Um, seven to nine. Okay. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's it's better bad. than me. Yeah. I got five and a half hours last night. I got. Five, yeah, before we, <laughs> before we hooped. I think it was four hours and 20, we, 23 minutes. You're listening to people that don't get sleep. We need to get more sleep. Yeah. Emphasizing in-season in diet. You got a little bit more leeway when you're in the season. Burning tons of calories right now. 
Um, you need to replenish it, but that's by eating the right things, not exactly eating everything. Um, something that I'm super stoked about is getting your protein. If you want to grow muscle, mind, it's the best fuel that you have for your body. And then, and then getting the right types of carbs and all that stuff, you know. There's so much stuff we go all, so in depth about what exactly um, an in-season diet should be looking like. But hitting those right things and, and just being disciplined with yourself, I think that's a really big thing during the season. If you want to stay away from injuries, you want to stay away from fatigue, those things, those things play a really big role. Be smart about your protein intake too in terms of like, what protein powder you're actually using if you use that for muscle recovery because certain protein powders have different molecules in them and you can actually be overplenishing your body with in terms of like what's it called glycogen what's that one called glycogen storage or yeah glycogen sh glycogen glycogen Gly Gly glycogen glycogen storage i know the last protein powder i had had way too many ingredients in it other than the protein so i switched to just strict whey protein which is way better for you right after say practice or a workout because i'm getting the right amount of nutrients and not overdoing the nutrients if that makes sense so be smart about all the protein powders and creatine and BCAs that you're taking, just know what you're putting into your body. And we're not just talking athletes right now. I mean, diet's a lifelong thing that everybody, especially in America, needs to really focus on. And there's a ton of resources out there. If you just, I mean, Google, we live in the technology era. And if you just Google, what should I be doing for diet? Um, you'll find a lot of good information. And I think one of the main things is portion control. Uh, you can still have the stuff you like to eat. Uh, I mean, w before this, we all had a Christmas cookie. And <laughs> having one Christmas cookie is a lot different than having, say, four. And it's all about just knowing how much you're putting in. So all in all about diet, it's really just discipline and knowing what you're putting into your body and how much you are. And if you're conscious about that and you're sticking to your plan, you'll be good. Well, one thing you're talking about portion control, Sam, if you are serious about changing your diet, um, learn how to meal prep. And meal prepping is like when you do all your meals throughout the week in one day. And I started doing that with chicken, rice, and veggies. And that has made drastic increases in my body's appearance just because of learning how to meal prep. And in terms of portion control too, be careful of what you eat after 6 p.m. Because that's where when you sleep on that full stomach, that's where all that fat builds up. And the parts of your body that you're trying to change, it's because you're snacking after 6 p.m. Yeah, no doubt. Um, and everything that you guys are saying in terms of mind, body, and spirit, um, these are all huge things for maximizing your performance. And, and I think going out, the biggest takeaways that you guys should have is, is how can I... I don't know if you're looking after this episode or going throughout the day, just think about it. How can I maximize my mind? Um, what can I do to become a smarter basketball player? What can I do to, to, to grow mentally as an athlete? Thinking about the spirit as well. What can I do to become more present? Um, how can we do you know, meditation or um, whatever you do? Don't forget about the spirit. That's a huge thing with your attitude and your mood. And then, and then finally, well, we talked about the body. Um, that's a big one. That's, that's what, there's so much for that, you know. CTG does a ton of stuff on that. If you follow them on Instagram, follow them on TikTok, or whatever you got, your aura is going to see something where, oh, this is going to help my game. This is going to build my game, make me better. There's so much stuff that you can use for it that I think you guys should be intaking every single day. Um, and then YouTube, internet, everything that's got there. Um, so, so these are the three big things that I've really been thinking, thinking about, um, and going forward, uh, we're mid season right now, a couple games in, so it's, it's not as easy to plan it out. You just kind of got to stay, stay focused on how am I going to take care of my mind? And then that's really the biggest part when you're in season, um, knowing your opponent, um, better than they know themselves and, and and knowing your game and seeing how you can improve with that and then and then being on top of your body 
there's only so much improvements that you can do. It's more of a maintenance thing right now for me. Um, I'm, I'm just trying to take care of sleep, take care of, take care of being in shape, um, heart rate and conditioning, and then, and then spirit as we talked about. So, so going forward, I think all of us should, should continue to focus on those three things and, and take what these guys said today, um, and use it to your lives. So before we get into the outro and Gobi, what was your biggest takeaway from the process from your first year in high school to now? It's a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> um, the biggest thing from the past few years has definitely been enjoying it. It is so quick. If you could have asked me, what is it, six years ago? Six years ago, we were all playing together. Five years for some of us, man. Um, and, and now we are where we are and it, it, you can blink your eyes and then boom, you're already here. But I, I, I really try to focus on enjoying it, taking advantage of every single day, going into practice, going into games, um, hanging out with your teammates, hanging out with your friends. Don't forget, don't take it too seriously. I mean, this is just another part of life. There's a whole nother part of life growing up wise that, that that's there at when it's time is coming. Um, but right now, as basketball athletes, don't forget to enjoy it um, and live live the process, experience it, no doubt. Yeah, that's huge. So if you've gotten anything gatekeepers out of this episode, just remember to find the process, love the process, and enjoy the process. Because you don't want to get to your end destination and not be satisfied because you missed everything in between. The journey, that's where it's at enjoy that process you guys want to do a quick speed round mm, i'd love to okay um give me a little time to think of questions i got a question okay you can start favorite pair of basketball shoes ever yeah Oof. okay that's that's actually pretty easy for me um kobe nine for sure that shoe had the most insane traction ever you could literally start and stop on a dime and it was like the floor was sticky almost. I would have to go with Kobe 9 as the best shoe of all time. Kobe 6, very easy. I'm also a fan of the Kobe 6. It's the first cool pair of basketball shoes I ever owned when I was 10. And great, great look, great traction, comfortable. Favorite TV show? Okay, that's pretty easy for me to answer. Game of Thrones is by far my favorite tv show of all time it did have a disappointing last season but again it's not about the destination it's about the journey no show compares to game of thrones in my opinion if i hear the word game of thrones one more time <laughs> i think every single person on my team right now is watching it shout out flame bodies i'm so sick of it stop you don't like game of thrones Nothing against the show, but I just got to wait for the hype to die down. Recently, I finished Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Super funny. I'm a big Andy Sandberg guy, so I'd say that one probably. Or How I Met Your Mother. That's I've seen that a few times. Those are two great shows. What's What's your favorite show, Nagobi? Atlanta, hands down. Shout out Donald Glover. <laughs> All right. My question if you could only read one book other than the Bible for the rest of your life, what would it be? A new one, actually an OG one, Dale Carnegie, How to Win Friends and Influence People. It's been a really good book. We just talked about that, didn't we? Yeah, we did. I, I got to check that one out. That's really good. So I'll pick a new one too. I don't know if this is, I could not pick between my favorite book because... A lot of my books that I read are finance books. I don't know if that'll be necessarily relevant when we're stuck on an island. So if I had to pick one, one new one that I really, really loved is called Chosen Suffering. It's basically about how God's plan isn't what you think it's supposed to be. The, the book's basically about tragedies that happen throughout life that can seem extremely unfair to certain people but it's about this man who had his son die out of completely nowhere at five years old his mother just picked up his child and the child just stopped breathing and this man wasn't necessarily close to god in the book 
But after his son died, he actually started to research religion more and he wanted to truly know if he's ever going to see his son again. And obviously at the end of the book, he develops a very strong and deep relationship with God. But it's all about having that chosen suffering and how you react to what happens throughout your life for the better. And just being able to truly believe that everything happens for a reason. Obviously, this man didn't want his five-year-old son to die. That's absolutely terrible. And I don't even know how anyone could go through something like that. But his ability to have chosen suffering and know that everything happens for a reason. So I strongly recommend that you check out Chosen Suffering. Yeah, I'll for sure check that one out too. If I'm picking one book for the rest of my life, I want it to be really long. And I'll pick the Book of Five Rings. It's a, a, it's written by a samurai. Um, it's about the ancient samurai ways and their military techniques. But it's not only just military it really implies to a lot of things and you're it's kind of really about the process and how you deal with things and your mind towards it and how you can utilize that uh, against your opponent or your goals so i'd pick that one i just want to let everyone know too game of thrones does have a book series so that would be my number two to bring the entire game of thrones series all right, guys, that wraps up another episode. Let us know how you like the podcast. We would love for you guys to rate us on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, whatever you guys are listening to. This will allow us to reach a wider audience, impacting more lives. If you have been a part of Close the Gate Hoops or you've been following us through the journey, we'd love if you submitted your testimonials. It can be a video or a text. Anything will help us. This will help others see how much true change Close the Gates can make on your life. We'd love as many questions as possible for new topics to talk about. So hit us up in the DMs. We want your critique. Always strive for a better. You are never too good at something. From Jacob Nagobi, Jack Hummel, and Sam Smith, we appreciate you gatekeepers for tuning in to another episode of Close the Gate Hoops Off the Court. Do it like I got a job. It's not my job to do this every day. But I hop in CTG studio and I don't play. Yeah, and I keep it like a player. XL34, hey ya. Yeah, I'm making that cash. Yeah, I'm getting them. Bang. And then I come back and spit it, spit it. Off the court hoops. With it, with it. Yeah, mind, body, spirit. Enjoy the process. And when you feel it. Can you hear it? What, what? My boy stands spitting like, what, what?